Hi, welcome to Rich's Random Retro Reviews. I'm Rich. And I'm Wolf. And today we are in slightly sunny Oxfordshire. Yeah, ish. It's, apologies for the lighting. <laughs> we, we've had to experiment quite a lot. Uh, we, we had it beautifully lit with sunlight coming in from the bay window and then the sun went away. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. Anyway, uh, why are we in Oxford? Because we never get to geek out at home. Because we never get to geek out at home. Our other halves don't like it. I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. No, Leave I'm me in with the question again. I can't. <laughs> okay, so uh, why are we in Oxford? Um, really because we never get to geek out at home. Our other halves don't like it. Yeah. And there's no room. And we have to get everything out, put it away again. And it's... Um, it's just, we, we have so much we want to explore and we never get the time. Yeah. And so I was going to come to yours. You were. And? And then you were in tier two. And we, yeah. And my lockdown and all sorts of complicated stuff happened. But God damn it, we booked the time off work and we were going to make it happen. So. We booked an Airbnb. Um, yeah. I live just north of Birmingham. Um, Wolf lives on the south coast. So Oxford is kind of between the two of us. Um, I think it's slightly further for me, about 20 miles further, because it's about 70 odd miles for you and about 19 for either yeah. way. It's about halfway. Um, and so we've booked this Airbnb and it's amazing. So yeah, it's really nice. It's, it's, it's very picturesque. Mm. It's uh, great for filming in because they, they've got lo lots of little knickknacks like the, the elephant and the flowers that show off the bokeh in our fancy shooting camera shooty filmy thing. And there's also a, a G4 hidden behind me on the floor that you can't see. Um, there's copious amounts of Max here. I think we had seven at the last count. Yeah, we've got a whole network set up. Yeah, because all these old machines have Ethernet on um, and we wanted to transfer files backwards and forwards. Um, we I bought a hub and... Obviously, nowadays everything is Wi-Fi, and there is a in um, a router here which has yep. a couple of ports on the back, but and a decent network connection too. We've got like a hundred meg down. Yeah, but with Virgin, the the upload rate sucks. It's about seven. Um, either which way, the download is is fine. Apart from from Macintosh Garden last night, that was atrocious. Yeah, we were like. getting like twenty k a second at best. Mm. So we ended up using the G four behind me to try to download stuff, and then. Um, just copied it over at Apple Talk to the various machines. Um, That's a load of waffle. It is. So the reason we're here is that we had um, some ideas for some uh, videos that we wanted to make. Um, and I've bought some bits over the last couple of years that I wanted to show Rich. And I have an addiction to eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Um, I keep buying things. And... Um, Wolf and I, we talk all the time on, on WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, whatever. And we send each other marketplace links all the time. We're, we're, we're terrible for encouraging each other. Yeah, and I send eBay links and stuff. So um, we just, yeah, we were talking about the various Macs and watching LGR and that kind of stuff. So um, excuse the noise, it's just decided to start raining. But anyway. It's all right, it's atmospheric. <laughs> Adds texture to the sound. It's like some smoke, you know gently drifting up because it's kind of like just gone Halloween um, anyway so LGR he had um, an unboxing of a PowerBook G3 and both of us went ooh PowerBook G3 yeah. Wolf never had one um, I did I think I had a, a Pismo at one point um, and I upgraded in a whole bunch of stuff um, so this one happened to be on eBay and I purchased it for Wolf as a present I love it. and there is a reason why I bought this one because um, it's one of the last uh, G3s that has cereal on and oh, it's the cereal cereal it's 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 that one there yep yeah, so we've got ADB and we've got cereal and there is a reason why we want cereal and why do we want cereal we want cereal because I bought this what is that this is an Apple eMate 300 mm -hmm. um, which you might not be familiar with unless you're really sort of deeply steeped in Apple history because it was a complete flop. Um, it came out in the early 90s, early to no, late 90s. Late 90s, 1997. Like 97, okay. Um, and it was designed to be used in the education market and it, it was, a, it, yeah, no one bought it. But it's really cool, it's just a lovely looking thing. Um, it's one of the first things that Johnny Ive designed um, you can you can tell because all the the curves and the the colors it's translucent yeah. greenish 
um, and just the whole look of it, it it's very reminiscent of the um, the coloured eye books that he went on to design. It looks um, like a clam. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but yeah, it was designed for the education market. Um, schools were going to buy them and assign them to the kids who could bring them to class and take their notes and do whatever and then uh, take them home and do whatever and then designed to be fairly rugged and um, and it runs Newton OS. It's essentially a Newton in a fancy suit. And what's um, a Newton? And a Newton is the Apple PDA. Is it one of the first PDAs? It may, may be the first PDA. I think it was because the Palms came out, I think, in 1997. And I think the original Newton came out... 94 or 93? It was it's very early. Because the, the one that I've got is a 94 and it isn't the first model, so... so I'm pretty sure Palm, they were sort of 1997, the firm Palm Pilot. Anyway, uh, the Apple Newton is a great big chunky PDA from the early 90s. Uh, again, way ahead of its time, but it had a much longer lifespan than this did. Um, this was quite late in the lifetime of the Newton systems. Um, this isn't branded as a Newton, it doesn't say Newton anywhere on it, it's the Apple E-Mate, uh, E-Mate 300, they never made an E-Mate anything else, this was the only one. Um, and yeah, it's a Newton in a fancy suit, runs Newton OS, um, it's really cool to look at, um, really nice to hold, doesn't really do anything that I've found, it, apart from you can type on it, you can draw on it, you can do all of the things that you can do with an Apple Newton only more slowly because it's not got a very good processor. However, to connect it to other things, um, you need to connect by serial. It has uh, the Apple serial port. What is it? Uh, there, behind this sna 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 behind this snazzy little door. That's a little proprietary dock connector thing. And that's the serial connector. And the serial connector is used to synchronise it with the host machine. Yeah. Apple um, Newton Connection Kit, I think it's called. And that basically allows you to transfer data to and from the device. Um, so we thought we'd have a, uh, a 90s Apple uh, adventure mm -hmm. and we'd uh, install some software, if we can find any, on the eMate. And for that we need a machine with classic Mac OS with a serial port. Uh, we, we did have one. <laughs> we, we were messing about with one last night, which I was terribly excited about, which was the PowerBook Duo 250, yeah. um, which is a 68K portable. Now, I've never played with a 68K portable. I've played with 68K Max before, but I was kind of super excited about that one. Unfortunately, it died. Yeah, we got a, a couple of hours out of it. I've been using it um, for on and off for a few months, but uh, it, it only had eight meg of RAM and it was quite crashy um, and it didn't have much software installed on it. So it was always a bit of a battle, but I brought it here and we had it set up with a screen and a keyboard and a mouse and all sorts of fancy things and we were trying to download stuff onto it. Um, and then eventually it just powered off and it would never come back on again. Well, we decided, well, I decided, <laughs> the um, the OS was missing a whole bunch of networking components, so we basically wanted to set up an Apple Share network, or an Apple Talk network, um, and we couldn't get networking working properly. Now TCP/IP worked because we could use Netscape to download stuff from Macintosh Card or FTP, but um, the Newton and a couple of other things that we've brought today um, come with floppy disk images or floppy disks, and we thought we could image them and then transfer them over to the machine. Um, and install the software that way because unfortunately the duo that we've got doesn't have floppy drive, it doesn't have opticals, so we can't burn CDs and, and that kind of stuff. The only thing that we've got really, um, we did have a, an, an external zip drive but that's died. Um, I should probably go and get it if, since we're talking about it so much. Yeah, okay. I'll go and get it and we can, we can do it. This is what you couldn't want. Um, so here we go. Uh, the PowerBook Duo 250, which is the... Uh, MacBook Air of the early 90s. Um, laptops back in the early 90s were huge honking beasts and this is really small and light. Um, and it has basically no expansion whatsoever. 
um, it doesn't have a modem. It, 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 it sort of hints that it might do. It's got a little telephone symbol there, but it doesn't have one. Um, it does have something under here. Oh yeah, it has an Apple serial under here. Um, and that is it for expansion. And then if you open it up... It must be noted, it does actually have a proprietary connection on the back of it. Yes, I, 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 oh, oh, I was going to get to that, but yes. <laughs> so, uh, if you have a look, it's got a decent sized screen, um, which is actually pretty good quality. It's, it's grayscale, but it's active matrix, and it's really usable. Love it. And it's got the great classic Apple trackpad deal with the um, nice clicky buttons. Very, very nice to use. Nice keyboard. Um, and as Rich says on the back, if I flip up this little thing, you've got a dock connector. And I don't know if this is the first, but it is one of the first laptops with an external dock. It was originally designed with a big fancy thing called a duo dock that sits on your desk and this slides into it like a, a VHS tape into a VCR and then becomes a full desktop computer with screen, mouse, keyboard, all sorts of expansion, um, Nubus slots, FPU, yeah, uh, uh, optional FPU, uh, basically it, it was designed to be a whole ecosystem where you could take your tiny little thing on the go with you and then when you get home, slap it into your office uh, dock and you've got your full computer. Um, again, uh, an Apple idea that was way ahead of its time. Unfortunately, this one no longer works. It's very sad. Um, I, uh, we have a video of it failing to boot, which uh, we can edit in because it makes a hilarious noise. Um, it, does, it, it does the normal Mac chime, and we were like, ooh. Yeah, but we've had a couple of sad Mac chimes as well out of it. Yeah, um, something inside is poorly, and there's not much in it to be poorly. Um, but yes, this is what we were going to make a video about, but sadly, it's going to have to be put to bed for a little while, because it will not boot anymore. So we were going to plug the serial cable into the eMate, and we were going to plug it into... The, the duo and install the Newton desktop connectivity, whatever it's called, and you know, but unfortunately that's dead. So we're going to use the G3. We also want to upgrade the G3 because it's got a four gigabyte IDE hard drive in, which is slow and it's actually really loud. Um, nowadays, you kind of forget with solid state drives being and everything that hard disks used to make a lot of noise, and they're slow and. It's 4 gig. So what I've um, also bought is a ID to compact flash card adapter um, and a 32 gig compact flash card, which is like an extreme, supposed to be super fast. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the hard drive out of the G3 and put the SSD in. Well, compact flash SSD. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do air quotes SSD. Um, I've also found the original installation media for the the G3. So it's it's got a Wall Street, but it's not the original Wall Street. It's the second generation PDQ um, revision. When it was on eBay, it was listed as a 233 megahertz G3. But it, I noticed in the screenshots that it had 512k of cache. And I was thinking, well, hang on a minute. The original Wall Street didn't have cache, the 233 model. Um, and it was, yeah, it was kind of, people didn't like it um, well. It, received poor reviews, let's say. Um, and then Steve Jobs told people to pretty damn quick fix it, which is where it got the PDQ moniker from. So this is the, um, the second generation, Wall Street, 233 megahertz, 512 kb cache. Um, the memory's been upgraded, it's about 384 megs, I think. Um, so this is significantly newer than, uh, oh, the Apple logo's upside down. This is significantly newer than the other bits of kit that we're that we're using it with. Mm -hmm. So it's several years newer than the eMate and several mm -hmm. years newer than the um, uh, the uh, Pav Duo. Um, did, did, um, did these start as Jobs was coming into Apple or were these post Jobs? The, they were when Jobs was there. Uh, just so um, he had arrived in, I think 90, I wanna say 96. Was it 96, something like that? 
So this is this is according to every Mac. This is uh, late 1998. So now I think that would have been a very early jobs if it was because he didn't come back into the company um, until he did. The, the, there's keynotes with him talking about this. So yeah, probably his, his very early jobs return. Yeah, um, but he, this is uh, unlike the other things that we had here, um, especially the email. This was not um, a, this was not a, um, what's the word for something that doesn't work? Let down, disappointment, yes. failure. The whatever. opposite actually. Yeah, no, this was very successful. Uh, not necessarily the specific model, but the this era of PowerBook G3 was a big step up from the previous PowerBooks and it was very successful. Um, and it has a sort of I iconic look. You can the the look is evolved from what uh, was the power books previously looked like. The color scheme is the same, but the the lines, the sort of um, curves and whatnot. I sound like I'm talking about a car. Um, oof, the lines and the curves and the aerodynamics. No, it, it's 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 all very much a step up, and the capabilities of it um, really. It, it, it held its own amongst the various alternatives. Um, and it's the last Mac with the colour the color logo. The colour logo, you can see it just there. Just in the middle there. Um, and I've always wanted one of these because I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Just really well designed, very capable machines. Yes. Um, anyway, we've rambled along on, we have rambled on long enough. So what we're going to do is... I think we'll probably swap the hard drive out with the um, compact flash adapter and we'll do a, a reinstall of macOS. Now, unfortunately, I did download the original installation media and burned it to CD, but the optical drive that this comes with, it just refuses to boot from it. But we can solve these problems. We have a coming plan. Uh, if we boot from the macOS 9 install CD, because this machine will support up to macOS 9.2.2, and I believe Mac OS 10.2.8, but uh. Yeah, if the, this is not the machine to run Mac OS 10, don't bother. I'm gonna leave Classic on it. Um, if we boot it up off a Mac OS 9 CD, because I know it does boot off a, uh, an installation, an official installation CD. Um, if we copy over the original uh, installation media as a disk image, we can double click on it once we're booted into this, the operating system off the CD, and we should be able to do an install and then we'll have a fresh copy of macOS 8.5.1, which is what these machines shipped with, and we can have a play. And we'll probably have to upgrade it to at least macOS 8.6, because a lot of software doesn't work with macOS 8.1. Mm. It is fully working now, but it's, it's worth mentioning, apart from the no battery, um, and it has a couple of quirks uh, to do. It has a farty speaker, and when you plug it in, it like the fans spin up and then it yeah so the, the speaker is a bit odd because as Wolf says when you plug it in the, the fans come on straight away you press the power button and it makes the Mac chime but the left speaker kind of goes a bit <laughs> but if you reboot the machine it doesn't do it so I'm not too sure about that the PRAM battery is dead it's been long since dead um, you turn it on and it has to kind of like oh, hang on a minute yeah alright it takes a little while to get going. But it's an old man, we can allow we can allow it some foibles. Somebody's definitely been inside the machine before because the heat shield that goes over the process has gone. Um, I, we have left it run for a couple of hours without the heat shield and it seems to be okay. It doesn't, doesn't overheat and turn off. Um, I think somebody's been in and I think there's a couple of screws missing from around the hard drive. Um, one of the memory modules is, is held in place by the keyboard um, it, it works. It, it works. works. It's it, if it was boring and everything worked on it, it, it would There'd be, be nothing to say. It would be boring. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're going to upgrade it and make it faster and quieter and uh, hopefully more reliable and more fun. And then we're going to muck about with the Emate and maybe some other bits that we've got hiding around this lovely Airbnb. What we're going to do is replace the mechanical drive that's in here with a 32 gigabyte compact flash card. And obviously we can't just plug that straight in. 
So in here we have this marvellous invention. It's a little uh, IDE to compact flash adapter. Now I've already, already formatted this and copied over the system software that we need. So that just slides in like that. And we'll just put that to one side because we'll need that in a moment. So let me open up the G3. And we undo set the DVD or the CD to one side and the floppy to another side. So under here there are two little latches. And you pull them towards you and the keyboard pops up. Now the ribbon cables are on the bottom, so what you have to do is slide it out and then flip it over. And inside, here's the hard drive, this is what we're going to replace. And here is the, well, this is a 256 meg module. Um, and this is the processor daughter card. So I'm just going to take that out and put the memory to one side. Now this actually has two slots. It's got one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, but this whole thing comes out. I'm just going to put a little spudger lift and then so there's the processor there's some cache there's the other memory slot I'm not entirely sure what that is perhaps that's the processor I'm not entirely sure anyway um, we'll put that to one side now somebody has been in here before because there are some screws missing so what we need is a Phillips screw. I'll just undo this one screw here. Now there's a little zero insertion of course connector here so just lift up and then pull out the caddy. Now we need to swap heads because the screws that are holding the hard drive in, and there's only two of them in this one, there should probably be four, is we need a Torx driver. I don't know what size, but... Now we won't need these again because the compact flash adapter doesn't have any mounting points. Now this is slightly awkward because there's plastic in the way so there is a trick if you push it and then pull the drive comes out. Now there's actually more pins on here than there is on here um, but one of the little pins is missing and then there's a pin missing there, so we need to align it to the right hand side. And what we'll do is we'll just slot that in. Um, we could probably use some insulating tape to, to hold it down, but we don't have it in hand, so at the moment it's just going to be kind of free floating, but it should be okay. We'll put the hard drive bay back in. Again, pushing down on that the daughter board. Now there's some notches just here and they line up with the frame. So it's a very tight fit. We'll line those up and then it literally just clips in like that. And then we put the memory back in. And this won't stay down because of the clips. So that needs sorting out. Now the keyboard has to go in the top edge first. And then it clips just into place. And then we can put the floppy drive back in. The right way up would help. And the opt 
electrical drive back in. And then we're ready to boot. So we've booted the machine off the OS9 installer CD because the compact flash card image is blank. That's right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, also, we, we have to use an external display because we're doing video capture. And um, we, 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 so we can't see it on the internal screen, which is why we've got this slightly weird setup. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I can do because there's no control panels for monitor and whatever. So unfortunately, we're going to just have the camera pointing at the screen for the mo at the uh, LCD at the moment. We've got, um, like Wolf says, we're, we're capturing this so we can splice in between um, camera and captured footage. But basically, the Mac OS 9 CD. We're just literally booting the machine so we've got an environment that we can actually run the software. Um, so we have here a PowerBook G3 series disk image. And this is a copy of the original install media that came with these devices. I'm not going to check Summit. So here we are. If we do an Apple software restore, we get this. So configuration is the disk image, the destination is the compact flash, and literally we don't need to press anything else other than restore. And this will go pretty quick because it's uh, quite a fast compact flash card. Yeah, look at it go. Whilst we watch the speeded up video of the installer doing its thing, I'd like to do a shout out to Macintoshgarden.org, which is a website that hosts lots and lots of classic macOS software, which is where I found this installer. There are others, but I found this site to be the best. There's a link in the description if you're in need of any retro software. So the install's finished, and we're going to do a quit. And we're going to do a reboot, but this time we're not going to uh, boot off the Mac OS 9 CD, we're going to boot off the internal SSD. And here we can see a whole bunch of stuff that it's put on there. Listen to that. Silence. Yeah, it's so eerie. I I will never get used to looking at the Mac OS boot screen, the classic Mac OS boot screen, and then just hearing nothing, because I'm so used to it being accompanied by. <laughs> well, if there is any noise, it's actually from this step down transformer I've got for the VGA capture, so there might be a a, f a 50 hertz hum. But I'll try and sort that out. Good. Grief, look how quickly it boots. It's amazing. Right, I'm, I'm not going to run the setup just yet. I'm just going to fiddle about with the resolutions because I want to try uh, monitor system sounds. Millions of colors. Uh, let's do 1024 by 768. Hey, there we are. So that means we can get rid of the external display now, doesn't it? Yep, with a bit of YouTube magicry, video editing magicry, we'll, uh, we'll get rid of this and we'll point the camera at this. Ooh, with the magic of uh, video editing and some moving stuff around, <laughs> we have a, a nice setup now. So basically this is the uh, setup assistant after well, when you buy the machine you turn it on the first time and this is what it will ask you to go through or if you use the installation media and wipe the device so I can ask a couple of questions we are British what's your name Wolf Are you currently observing that? So I have no idea because I never no. understand that thing. Four, no, no, we, we, we're back out of it now. 32 p.m. and it is the 11 of the 2nd, 20. Is it in US format? The setup assistant is in US format, stupid. 
Londres. London. Do you want to use a simple finder? No. I want to use advanced finder. Right, so retro wolf g3. And the password is going to be wolf. Now we will put in an ethernet cable so we can start copying some files off the G4. Uh, G3 shared files. Yeah, so this has always annoyed me. How is your printer connected? Well, what if you don't have a printer? Well, you have to choose nothing. Don't have a printer? What kind of person doesn't have a printer? In 1998, who doesn't have a printer? Bubble jet printer. Ooh. Did you have one of those HP bubble jets that was all kind of boxy, like a like an L shape box deal? No, we had. I don't a... know how to describe it. I, what I'll do is I'll find an image and send it to Rich, and he can edit it in at this point of the video. We had a Canon BJC six hundred and ten. Now there's no audio, which is annoying. So we're going to turn on platinum sounds, and we're going to turn on double click and smart scrolling. Cool. Um, right, I also went hunting on the internet. Let me just change the font because I always have the font set to gadget. You went on the internet and you found. What did you find? I found a picture. Do I want to know? Dodgy picture. Is it that one with the boot? It's this one. So if we set the desktop now, Shark. so this picture was uh, used in the promotion of the power books uh, and I hunted high and low on the internet and found it. So if we do a quick about this Mac or about this computer, so do you know what is different between 8.5 and 8.6 in terms of um, the boot screen. No. 8.6 was the first to introduce the version number. Ooh. So when you boot this one up, it'll just say Mac OS. When you boot up Mac OS 8.6, it'll say Mac OS 8.6. So this was the last one that just said Mac OS. I did not know that. So, we have the DVD player bundled, but it won't open because we don't have the PC card or the drive. We don't got one of those. True. Um, there's not really much in terms of bundled software, that one. So yeah, I think because this was like a, a business machine, if you look in applications, there's not really a whole bunch of stuff. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what we can do. Let me, let me wander over here for a second. We can install the Microsoft Office. Oh my gosh. Version the Microsoft Office. Version 98. Because this came out in 1998, believe it or not. So just a little while after this machine got released. Mm. And before the trend of um, putting version numbers way ahead of where you actually are. So like Office 2000 in, I don't know, was Office 2000 in 2000? I think so, but then they decided to get rid of it with Office XP, which is what Windows uh, 2001 when XP came out. Yeah. What's interesting with this is it says it's an upgrade, and I was a bit disappointed when I bought this because the guy didn't sell it as being an upgrade. However, it is the full version and it doesn't do a check. Exciting. If you have a previous version installed. Now for you and I, installing software on a Mac is fairly obvious. You basically pick the folder up and copy it over. And to uninstall, you just drag it to the trash. There are a couple of extra extensions and things around, but... Yeah, some things come with installers, but mostly it's just drag and drop, isn't mm -hmm. it? This is the second to last version of Microsoft Office for the classic Mac OS.
the installer comes with only Word, Excel and PowerPoint, although there was a separate download available for Microsoft Outlook to connect to Exchange servers. Right, on later Macs there was an eject button on the keyboard for optical media. This one doesn't have one, so you just drag the CD to the trash and it unmounts it and spits it out. I wonder if there's a key combo or a, um, whatever, a, cons a control strip button. There is a control strip button. Don't, oh, the mouse is taking ages. Uh, that one there. So See, this is a feature that I think a lot of operating systems are missing. The control strip was just great. I love the control so strip. So handy. Although, you'll see in a second, it is a bit annoying sometimes. Let me just open Word. So the first time you run it, it asks you to go Pretty sure you just violated the DMCA. It's so quiet. It's crazy, isn't it? Because it's passively cool. There's no fan in there, is there? No, Steve Jobs hated fans. So rather than having Clippy, we have the little Mac. Yes, we're going to start using Word. Right, so if we just drag that over there and we view it as a page layout, because that's my favourite view. Now this is where the control strip's irritating because it's covering half the things down the bottom. Oh, yeah. Now this isn't Apple's fault, this is Microsoft's fault. They stuck this at the bottom of the screen and you can't move it. But the control strip obscures it. But anyway, yeah, the control strip's brilliant. Oh, that's Mac OS X keyboard shortcut. Uh, hide. Yeah, so you've got down the bottom here, we've got things like turn Apple Talk on and off, um, about the battery if it's charging, we've got the ability to eject um, anything that's in the CD drive. Um, if you had an audio CD, you could automatically play music straight from here, skip forward, backwards, etc. Uh, this allows you to change the energy saver settings. So at the moment we're on best performance, so if you've got battery if you're on battery you can set it to all sleep after two minutes of idle and all that kind of stuff. Uh, file sharing. This is another energy saver so this will spin down the hard drive which obviously won't work anymore. Um, location manager. So if you had a uh, location set for preferences like, like um, communication preferences for if you're in the office. Yeah. Um, and then at home you could just, you know, if you had a different ISP at home to your office you could quickly switch there. Um, I'm just going to skip over that one for a second, but here we have the ability to change the colour, depth, screen resolution, volume control. Now in Mac OS X, it's up here. You can press the uh, speaker and change the volume control there. Um, allows you to change the input for microphone and that kind of stuff. Um, and then open personal web sharing, so you could set up your machine as a personal web server. Right, this one, this one I skipped over, this is what Wolf was talking about earlier. This uh, tells you um, what's in the in the base. Now, well, it allows you to eject, but it doesn't actually tell you what it is. So, um, if we take that out. Did you see the little icon disappeared? I didn't. Well, if we do this one. Oh, yeah. And then if you plug it back in again. It reads it there we are so it tells you that it's occupied there we are. neat so yeah that's that's about it for mac os 8.5.1 and the built-in software so what we're going to do is i've got a g4 behind me i'm going to turn that back on again and apologies for the fan noise um but there's uh, a couple of shares on there that we can connect from the PowerBook uh, over the network and copy some files. So we'll do an update to macOS 8.6 and we'll see the different boot screen. Um, we've then got the Newton software that we can install and hopefully with Serial connected to the eMate and 
do some file transfer kind of stuff. Yeah, and maybe install an app or two on it, because yeah. I've not been able to do that yet. Cool, so um, magic, magic of video editing. Right, so we've got the eMate here, and we need to get the Newton software. So the G4 has a, a file share on. So if we go to the chooser, and we go to Apple Share, and enter the IP address. And we put in my credentials. It will ask which volumes we want to share. So I'm going to choose Rich because the software is in the download folders on Rich. And on the desktop here, we have a mounted volume. So the G4 is running macOS 10.4.11. And under downloads, we have some of the software that we downloaded earlier. So first things first, uh, we've got the macOS 8.6 update, and then we've got the Newton connection utility, and we've also got Stuff Expander, a slightly newer version. So I'm going to copy these over. Wolf's driving because I know nothing about Newton OS. Um, and I don't know all that much about Newton OS, but I, I know more than Rich does. So here we go. This is my eMate 300. Um, I was quite pleasantly surprised to see that when I powered it on, because I haven't used it for several months, everything I did before was still on there, and it actually opened up to this screen, with uh, which I'd taken a picture of because I wanted to show it off in the low-end Mac group. Um, when you when you turn it on, it remembers where you were before. But this is a very simple and focused device. So its only app per se is the document writing and drawing app, which is what I'm in right now. Um, anything else is filed under extras, which you get by pressing this button here. And extras has all of the other apps, so to speak, but none of them really do a lot. It's like an app drawer, isn't it, when you press yeah. that button? Um, now, it, the reason why Wolf said that he was quite pleased that everything was still on there was on Windows CE devices, which I absolutely love and I keep going on, on about, um, basically when the device loses power, uh, it, it wipes the internal memory. So um, there yes. must be some kind of... There must be a battery backup in there, um, or or um, some form of ROM file system. Yeah, uh, what's that kind of flash that doesn't get um, erased when you lose power? Um, there's a word for it, I've forgotten what it is. Anyway, so uh, let's say that you've created a document and you want to do something with it. You've got these two icons down here, um, and they're not particularly obvious what each of them does. So if I hit this mail one, it gives you the obvious uh, sending it options. You can send it by fax, wouldn't that be exciting? Um, if you had a modem. Or you can duplicate it or delete it. So delete is under the mail menu, yeah. and filing it is under this little folder menu. But that's all you can do with that menu, is just file it. So if I press file, it will go into my personal folder now. Um, and if I want to view the other documents, I have to press this overview button and that will list all of the documents that I've that have been created. Um, I started writing a terrible book. Um, I this was something I typed out earlier and just to see what the keyboard was like to type on. Um, not great is the answer because if you are used to any sort of full-size keyboard, you'll find that you reach for shift and you hit up arrow, which sends your arrow up into what you're already typing. So let's say you're typing away. The Creek Brown Fox. You go to press shift, but you miss. You go up, and then instead of shift typing, you're typing on the upper line, or you're typing in the middle of your old text. So that happens quite a lot. Um, 
But if you were a kid, because the keyboard size is at 85% that of a, a normal keyboard. Yeah, it would, it would be fine. It would be better for a kid's hands. It's just that this, I'm so used to shift being at the edge of the keyboard. That yeah. It trips me up all the time. It's one of those things where you want to find a certain key, you just naturally go right to the edge because that's where it is. See, I don't use the shift on that side, so I don't think I'd have a problem. Oh, yeah. That... And also because it's a Mac layout. I mean, it's not a standard Mac layout keyboard. There's a... There's an extra tilde comma over the, that side. Yeah. But the um, the enter key and the backslash are all in the same place, and the at is on number two, whereas in England, shift two is quotes. Yep. Um, I mean, it's you, the, everything you need is pretty much there, um, and and you can type quite well if you want to. Uh, Ah, you see there. <laughs> that was exactly what happens. But um, that's that's what happens when I try to get up to speed. So but let's try and do it without me using the right shift. Um, it's not too bad. Oh, and the backlight goes off. Um, Presumably to preserve battery, so you, you toggle it on and off with this little button here. Um, um, we don't have F keys, but we have a row of dedicated hot keys. Yes, I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. That's just uh, what I thought was interesting is that I let my kids use this because I just thought, well, what kind of stuff would they like to do with it? So if I hit the overview button again and have a look at some of the stuff that they've created. Um, oh no, that page is up and down. I can't. I actually need to use the. So this is something that one of the children did. Um, presumably they found some stamps in here somewhere. Let's see which of these various things has stamps on. That's just drawing a line. Oh, there, the stamper. Yeah, there you go. A little drink there. Um, so that's kind of Kid picks esque I suppose. Um, if I do a new one of these, new drawing. Put that in because I'm 12. And then you can do all of the standard drawing things that you would expect. fonts somewhere. Um, there you go. So, you know, a school kid could put together a few diagrams, type out their homework um, quite easily. You can even um, move stuff around. front, move to the back. It's an exercise in patience there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there we go. That's that's the uh, the Apple eMate in all of its glory. And now let's try and connect it up to the Mac and see if we can send some files over and maybe install some interesting apps to it, if we can find any. Yeah, so I found a website with a whole bunch of software on. Um, I haven't downloaded any of it yet because there was too much to kind of figure out, but I'm sure we can probably find some games like, I don't know, card game or something. Yeah. Um, but let's try and synchronize with the power book and see if we can get your novel and your fancy drawing off and see if there's anything that we can, we can do with it. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to install the Newton software. 
As I mentioned in the intro to this video, we intended to upgrade the macOS version from the factory 8.5.1 to macOS 8.6. Like any time you want to play with retro software, there are always hurdles that you must overcome. This particular hurdle forced our hand, as the version of Stuff It was too old to open the compressed archive for the Newton software. However, the version of Stuff It we chose to use needed a newer version of macOS, so we installed that first. We then installed Stuff It Expander, and finally we were able to get to the Newton Connection Kit. The Newton OS in the eMate is version 2, and therefore we needed to use the newer Newton Connection Kit, rather than the Newton Connection Utility, which is used for older Newton OS 1.x devices. However, this wasn't the end to our woes. Some software was released in disk image format, which funnily enough is still common practice today. However, unlike disk utility in modern macOS, disk copy is required to mount such images and wasn't included with our install. This was an easy fix, and a disk copy was downloaded from macintoshgarden.org, placed on the G4, and copied over to the G3 by Apple Talk. Now I can mount these disk images. One. Two. Three. And start installing it. Newton Connection Utilities. Right. Okay. Now, uh, should I read the readme? Probably. No. Yeah, I'm gonna read the readme. No. Yeah. Real men don't read the readme. Getting started. No. Quit. Let's try it. Mm. <laughs> it says to back up my Newton device. What if it? What if it ruins everything? We haven't connected anything yet. It says on the Mac's screen, start by establishing a connection from your Newton device. So let's try and do that. Let's. It works, dude. So backup, restore, import, synchronize, keyboard. Mm. Okay, well let's let's synchronize. Let's see what that does. As neither Wolf or I have ever tried to get synchronization working between a Newton and macOS, this was completely new to the both of us. Unlike most Apple applications, it didn't seem terribly obvious what to do, and it was only purely by luck, a lot of button clicking and head scratching that we managed to figure it out. My PDA experience all come from the dark side with Windows CE and Windows 9598. Looking at this software, it was clear that handheld PC Explorer and then later ActiveSync were much, much easier for getting data to and from your device. Once we managed to get some data off the eMate, finding a compatible application to open it with was relatively easy. Trying to find compatible software for such old devices is becoming increasingly more and more difficult and it's only thanks to websites such as macintoshgarden.org and archive.org will be able to find and download of the era software. It's an RTF so we've, we, we do have Word installed don't we? So we should be able to open it in Word. Thank goodness we went ahead and installed Microsoft Office. <laughs> Dude, right. that's, okay, that's kind of cool. I like I like the uh, the handwritten text. Yeah. We played with the eMate some more and managed to find some software, but weren't able to successfully get this installed. Suffice to say, the eMate is a great little device, but I wouldn't rush out to buy one. So we need to film something as a little wrap-up video after our little Airbnb excursion. Yes. So yeah, we um. We ran out of time, we had, well, I had so many plans to do this video and this video and as with anything retro. So yeah, unfortunately things take five times longer than you expect them to, so we haven't managed to get all the projects done, so I wanted to upgrade the iBook with an SSD and put an airport card in it and um, upgrade the memory and there was a couple of other bits we wanted to do with the, about the quick take camera, take some photos, do a screen capture of um, the process of transferring the pictures over and what the quality was like, yeah, we didn't have time for it. We did take some photos and, and managed to 
get them onto the G3 and, and have a look at them that way. But yeah. we can show some of them in the edit. In the edit, some in the edit. Um, they are terrible. Yes. <laughs> so uh, lessons learned from this, uh, what we found out so far, I would say. Excuse the airplane going over. Meow. I would say that the Newton devices, Newton, the Newton devices are great. Uh, the uh, the Baby Newton 110 is um, primitive, but it works. It does everything that it says it does quite well. Um, and uh, allegedly, because I can't figure out how it works. It's really complicated. <laughs> it's not intuitive at all, um, which is surprising for Apple, really. But I can kind of see why Steve Jobs just can it. Went, nope. Um, but it's great. Um, get the one with the backlight, though. Yeah, because otherwise you have to do that kind of... Well, yeah, well I was trying to use it last night and we had a filming light in here and it's still really difficult to see. Uh, the eMate is great, we couldn't find any good software to put on it, the only thing we managed to install was one Babylon 5 doorbell chime, which is really cool and I'm happy with it. But for something to type on and prat around drawing things on, um, if, you, if that's all you want to do and if you aren't like programmed into normal keyboards so you don't keep slipping up with these keys here, it's great, um, but you're not. It's not useful at all in any other. Um, it's just a curiosity. It's fun. I love it. But um, yeah, maybe don't get one if you actually want to do things with it. And we also didn't get a chance to try the infrared. Um, the G3's got infrared on. We could have tried to do it. So we we basically think this was a serial cable. So yeah, we did manage to send some stuff backwards and forwards between the two um, between the two devices um, once I figured out how that worked, which also wasn't intuitive at all. Um, we say we, but it was Paul. It was very clever. Uh, this poor soul is, uh, as far as we can tell, dead as a doornail now, which is really sad. It does power on, it makes horrible noise, and then it powers off again. Yeah. And um, one day I may repair it, but that day is not today. So R.I.P. Poor little PowerBook One, the PowerBook Duo One Fifty Two Fifty. PowerBook Duo Two Fifty. Um, I, I very much enjoyed it at the times that I have had it working, but. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with that because I... You really wanted to play with that, didn't you? Like I said, I've never played with this 68K portable before. And we bought um, a zip drive and we were going to like install the software and get it networked and... The zip drive didn't work either? No, the zip drive was DOA, so um, that was slightly irritating. But we did get like 10 zip disks. <laughs> yep, which is... Uh, they're, they're actually pretty expensive, so I, I, the, 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 the purchase was a oh, good deal. Yeah, but, it wasn't too bad. Um, and I have another zip drive tucked away in my storage somewhere that might work, so... That, I can follow that up later, maybe. Um, had a play with the quick take. Didn't get to demo any of it on the video. Um, I, I love the form factor. It's just really fun to use, and especially just the composing shots and everything. And the, this more cameras should have this form factor because it's really handy. I just love it. Uh, but the pictures are terrible. I think they're like six forty by four eighty. Yeah, uh, but, um, and that was like that's high quality. And th that's not even the biggest problem, it's the light, like the flash blows everything out and makes everything look horrible and if you don't use the flash, it's um, too dark. Yeah, and we had decent lights to use and it didn't seem to help. I did like last night that you had it on the, t on the tripod, it does have a tripod mount on the bottom. It does, I thought if I put it on the tripod and hold it, hold, held it steady it might take a longer exposure and not take a terrible photo, but no, that didn't work. No, I thought that was hilarious, I was, <laughs> I was sat over there and he had this tripod out and he was like trying to take this, this cool picture and they just looked atrocious and then the other thing although they take pictures in the picked image format i'd read about this with or i think i watched lgr or somebody was talking about the quick take camera although it takes pictures in the picked image format um it's a it's a it uses a different codec or something because although this um can open pics with quicktime picture viewer and we had the g4 behind us None of them could open the pictures, so we ended up having to take screenshots of each of the windows. Well, the, it, it could open the pictures, but it can't save them again. Yes, that's okay, what he said. But so you can't save it as anything other than the format it's already in. So you have to use the software. Now, unfortunately, this PowerBook, the software is slightly too new. Um, I think there's, there's a problem with QuickTime, basically, um, and you, you can't export to any of the formats. So, um, like as I say, the only way we found how to get the pictures off was to do a screenshot of the actual window and then transfer that to another machine. So we've got those pictures at least. Yeah. Um, but what I'm what I'm loving about this at the moment is all these little rainbow apples. Now yeah. I said I said this yesterday. We've got the, the little rainbow apple here on the e, uh, the E Mate, on the Newton, on the Quick Take, on the Duo. They're all just little coloured ones. 
Yep. Um, I'm not wearing my my knockoff brand T-shirt <laughs> today. Um, I'm not wearing my knockoff brand T-shirt either. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I think the standout though of the um, uh, of, our, of our little um, extravaganza here has got to be the little Wall Street there. It's not little at all. The big G3 Wall Street. I did. To be fair, I didn't expect to use it so much. I, I, I love it. I think it's great. And it just works. And the process of upgrading it to a compact flash storage solution, SSD, um, that worked really well. It was really okay. easy. Um, and that, you, you said that I'm really clever about this, but you're the one who did that with like no bother. Um, so th that's really easy to do. And, and once you've done that, it's so fast and so quiet. Yeah. I mean, you, because there's no fan in here, it's, it's passively cooled. When you turn it on, it's eerily silent, and you're like, "Is it? Is it working? Is it? Do I mean, it do you get the Mac chime, but this this poor old granddaddy's got a bit of a some issues. You turn it on, and it sits there, and it doesn't actually boot immediately. It kind of takes a bit time to warm up, and then it goes more up. And but even so, it still boots, and um, it's quiet and quick. Yeah, and uh, Classic is really responsive. I mean, Classic's always been responsive, but it's like snappy, you know, copying files over and. Um, if you want a machine to run classic Mac OS up to Mac OS 9, we've got 8.6 on it, I think, and 8.6 works really well with everything except trying to connect to the internet in any fashion, but I think that's a problem just across the whole of classic Mac OS. If you want to get on the internet, that's the wrong thing to use, but if you want a really good classic Mac OS machine to relive your, your youth of using whatever you used back in the 90s, um, or, or just to explore that, then that's the perfect one to get. It's really good. I also think because of the expandability of it. Now, these modules are quite difficult to come by these days, but if at least if you buy one of these, then you do, in the future, have the option of buying the floppy drive if there is one available for a decent price and, a, and a, uh, an upgraded optical drive. So yeah. you're not quite limited. Like I've got a couple of iBooks, and they don't have any expandability at all. Um, so you can't swap things out, you're stuck with what you have, whereas this one, at least, like, like I say, you've got the option to do a couple of things. The processor can be upgraded if you can find a, a, an upgrade. Um, and it's really easy to get inside. Yes. It's you great. don't even need any tools. It's nope. brilliant. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little machine, actually. And we've used it loads. I thought we'd kind of like upgrade the hard drive and, and kind of leave it at that, but we've used it, because the duo unfortunately didn't work out, we've used it for the Newtons. And we used it for the quick take because it's got serial on and that was one of the reasons why I bought it. So, um, yeah, it's worked out really well. And we would have used it for the zip drive if the zip drive had worked. Um, and I'm going to look out and see if I can find a zip module for the expansion bay. If yeah. I see one of those, I'm going to grab one. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, and I'd love to get the G3 decoder card thing, the um, uh, MPEG-2 yeah. DVD decoder card. That'd be really cool too. And possibly rebuilding the battery because that would be kind of cool. Oh, we, yes. we did talk about that. Yeah. Um, so there we go, that was what we've discovered, um, it, it's really good, I love being sort of back in the old classic world of Macs, um, because it just, it's, it, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling for me. Yeah, and what I like is the fact that we've come here and it's literally just been about computers and yeah. old computers, because both of us love this kind of stuff. And we've been able to banish all thoughts of pandemics and Covid and politics and and the horrible orange man and all of that. It's just, it's been really nice to have a little bit of time away from yeah, all we, of that. We did, we did go out for lunch yesterday and we did, there was a little bit of talk we about had, Yeah, we had a little bit of a rant. Yeah, but apart from that, you know. It's while been, eating our KFC and charging my car. Oh yeah, it was, what else have we done? We basically just sat down and watched really stupid videos on YouTube and made each other laugh uh, whilst, yeah. whilst doing this kind of stuff. So it's been a really enjoyable experience and I'm so glad that we've had the, the opportunity to do it before this national lockdown nonsense. Yeah, that, that's another takeaway from this I would say is that if you have a mate, you live a little further away from each other and you're both into geeky stuff and you, you just don't get time to do it during the normal, you know, your normal life because of kids or family or job or whatever, book a few days off work, just say to the other half, I'm going to go and spend some time with my mate and, and go and do it, find somewhere to go and just take some toys and that, that sounds filthy, doesn't it? It does, it does, <laughs> it does. But what I would say is, I, well, now we've just done a holiday in a camper van around Scotland and we did actually rent a, a, a property whilst we're up there, but so this is, that was through um, booking.com, whereas this is actually through Airbnb and 
I like the fact that this is our space for the, the time that we've had it. Yeah. Um, and we've made a mess. We've had cables everywhere. We've rearranged the furniture. We've had, um, yeah, just lighting galore and stuff. We had a full network set up um, covering like the whole room with different machines plugged into yeah, it. Yeah, all Ethernet cables absolutely everywhere. Oh yeah, and they've got the router here. So a lot of places will just go, oh, here's the Wi-Fi code, and you never actually see where the Wi-Fi is because it's shared with whatever. No, the route is here, and it's dedicated to this place, and we could plug into the back of it and set up our network. And so, so we've had internet. That was an unexpected yeah. bonus. Um, first of all, we didn't kind of think about that, did we? We kind of no. were trying to do bloody static IP addresses and, st and stupidness. Yeah. And then we'll point, well, why don't we just plug the hub into the router? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that would work. And that's actually been a lot better idea. But... <laughs> Because this is our space, we can do what we want. We don't have to. The, the problem I've got at home is I get moaned at when I get my toys out. Um, it's like, oh, how long are you going to be? How long are you going to be? And I have to then put everything away at the end of the day. Whereas here, we've we've pretty much been able to leave everything out as as we want to. Yeah. There's another plane going over. Um, and the problem I have is that I can't do any of it before about nine o'clock at night because that's when I put the kids to bed and they're just around the place all the time. Um, which is fine, you know, it's their house too. Uh, but it just means that if, if I ever do anything like this at home, it's, You're in, very limited. it's in the middle of the night yeah. and, and I'll finish at sort of two or three in the morning and then I've got to pack it all away and I'm exhausted and it wipes me out for the next day. So it's just not practical. No, but it is, oh, it's spitting everywhere. But it is nice to be able to just leave your crap everywhere, isn't it? And yeah. then pick it up whenever you need it, not, oh, I put it in that box and it's three boxes underneath that other one and bleh. No, it's, I've really enjoyed it, and I, I've had a really positive experience with Airbnb. I mean, it's not cheap in terms of, like, you know, you can get a hotel for 50 quid, but in a hotel you get a room, and perhaps two because you have a bathroom and the bedroom, but here we've got the living room, dining room, we've got kitchen, um, bathroom, bedroom, storage, landing, we've also got a little vestibule just by the front door, um, you know, so it's, a, it's our space, and we've got... A, we can do what we want with it, yeah. as long as we're respectful and we don't, you know, spray paint the walls and all that nonsense. But, you know, we've put everything back as it was, tidied away. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very happy that Rich is here because that's he, he does that stuff very well. I'm, I'm <laughs> I'd woken up this morning, he woke me at half nine, he's like, time for breakfast. And, um, and like half of everything had already been tidied away and then um, while I was showering he was tidying everything else away. So I've just got to organize my own crap and put it in the car. I have a I have a problem with time. I'm spitting everywhere again. Pip, 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 pip. And it's like time to check out. It is time to check out. So let's let's wrap this up. Um it's it's been enjoyable. It's been really enjoyable I've and loved it. G three is amazing. Yeah. Newtons are fun but useless. Quick take is fun but completely useless and RIP and RIP the poor public duo. Old sixty eight K Macintoshes are um, problematic. They all die in in um, sad and interesting ways. That's been my overall experience. Um, and there we are. Yep. Thanks thank for you, watching. Thank Sorry. you so much for watching. That's if you have been watching, unless you've just been skipping and like whatever they're talking about. Yeah. But yes, thank you very much. It's appreciated. I hope you enjoyed all of our wittering because we witter really well, don't we? We do. Loads of wittering. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time that we do this. We, indeed. And um, I mean, I'll be posting some videos of things that I didn't get around to doing, and no doubt you'll be doing some yeah, videos. I'll, I'll be working on some videos, and if I ever get around to editing them, <laughs> them up, I've, I've got two videos that I've been working on for six months. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, I'm sure eventually they'll see the light of day, maybe. Anyway, we yes. need to go, we need to check out. So thanks so, for watching. Take care, bye. See you in the next one.